Yes, here we are, weekend three of the Chennai Storytelling Festival 2021. And um, I want to introduce to everybody uh, Wangari Grace. She is an excellent storyteller based in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. And she is going to conduct a workshop on um, uh, a, an interactive Kenyan approach to, to storytelling. So uh, Wangari, please uh, go ahead. And everybody, you can decide if you want to pin her image to make it large, or if you want to choose speaker image to make her image large, or if you want to see the gallery view. Okay, Wangari, please go ahead. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for being part of this. Um, I'm looking forward to have a workshop that is quite interactive. I can talk a lot, but I hope that today I don't talk too much, that I don't listen to you guys. So I hope we can be able to uh, have a sharing session. And I think the first thing that I would want us to do is um, I would like us to have an introduction, something very short. Yes, I can see your names. I can see Kathik, I can see Chick, I can see Christopher, I can see Franzine, I can see Shivani. But let's make it a small game. I want you to think of your name and you can use either your first name or your second name. All right? Now, think of a verb or an adjective, an action word that rhymes with the name you have chosen. So first of all, choose one name. Which name do you want to use for this session? Now, Wangari, if I can yes. say one thing, there uh -huh. are 66 people now in the workshop. So oh, wow. uh, okay. obviously no. we, we won't have time for right. everyone to do this. Okay, uh, we will, so, wow, so, so I maybe, even that. Yeah, so maybe like the first five or six or seven people yeah. can do it. We'll have the first five and uh, you mm -hmm. can raise your hand if you want, you, you want to go first. And you can do this uh, maybe at the middle of the session again for the, another five people, all right? Uh, and as, as someone has typed, you can also type it in the chat section. Oh, amazing. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. Feel free to do that. Okay. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Now, I can see already Francine is dancing, but Francine, can you give us an action that reflects with your first letter? So Francine, F, F something. So it can be Dancing Davis or... Francine something, and then I'll just pick at random because I would like to give you to give us an action, do an action. So for example, I have just seen Smiley. Let me see, let me see. Let's miss me Smiley who was doing that. Okay. Ah, Smiley Shama, where is Shama? Shama, where, 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 where are you? Uh, wow, I don't know if I can see you, but yes, so. Let me look for you because I'd like you to give us a smile that reflects with your name. So she, if you are smiling, Shama, can you give us a smile? Please put well, your video on. She, she might have her camera turned off. Yes, I've just realized that. So hmm. have your camera on and give us a smile and say smiling Shama with a big smile on your face. Or maybe we could all say smiling Shama. Oh yeah, why not? <laughs> and give us a smile, all right. so. Can you say that? Let's go. One, two, three. Smiling Shama. Yeah. Oh, I can see Seema's smile. Seema has a very big smile on her face. Thank you so much. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. So uh, let me pick someone else at random. Okay. Let me have uh, David. David, have you thought of a name rhyming with you? Either of your first name, or either your first or your second name? I wrote David. So we go, David Drumming. Aha, uh -huh, all right. So can we all go drumming, David? Let's go one, two, three. Drumming, drumming David. David. Oh, awesome. Very good. Okay, aha. Uh -huh. Let me pick someone else. I can see Belen Rodriguez with some nice grass behind her. I love your backdrop. Okay, have you thought of an action that goes with your name? Okay, maybe put your microphone on. 
Yes, like blooming, blooming, Belen. Oh, amazing. So can you all bloom together? One, two, three. <laughs> blooming, Ooh. darling. Aha. <laughs> Very nice. Let me pick one last one. Aha. Let me see. Let me see. Um, we have uh, Vasugi. Vasugi. Wow. That's uh, at least your first, your first name has uh, an unusual initial for us. Very few of our names start with a V. So have you thought of uh, something yeah. that goes with your name? Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. My name is uh, named after a very virtuous uh, Tamil lady who was Tiruvalluvar's wife. So I would say Vasugi is like this. You would say? Vasugi is like, like no, she's this. Aha, uh -huh. okay, so let's go one, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing storytelling, it's one of the tactics I try and use to have the audience know that this is not going to be them sitting, it is them participating. So that when I start there, they're like, oh, so we have to talk. Oh my God, we have to do something. So at least you start setting the, the pace for them. Now, um, I can see a few familiar names. So meaning that maybe a few of you have watched my performance. And I think the Kenyan way of storytelling, some people say that we don't do storytelling, that what we actually do is story theater. Because they say, but in your storytelling, you sing. In your storytelling, you dance. In your storytelling, you have a tongue twister. And I usually say, I don't know any other way of doing storytelling because that is the Kenyan way of doing storytelling. And I hope that by the time we are finishing this session, we will have uh, gotten a few tips and maybe even tried a few of them with a few of you in this particular workshop. And we can always infuse a bit of storytelling. I know especially the Indian storytellers I have watched um, I know dance is big in India. When I was growing up, I was watching Ramayana. And all Indian movies have music and dance. So, so, so th that colored my, my image of India. Even before I came to India, I know that I, I thought that everybody in India knows how to sing and they know how to dance. Maybe it is the same thing that people expect that because I am Kenyan, I know how to run. I cannot run. Our athletes run. I do not know how to run, but you know. So I want to begin by sharing a story. Uh, it's a, an African folktale that you might have heard before. And I will just share the story briefly. And I, I will share with you how I do it interactively. And then we can have a discussion around it. OK. It is a story about why, when you see monkeys, they're always going to be climbing trees. So I call it, why monkeys climb trees? Well, so they say that many years ago, the monkey and the tortoise were friends. They were neighbors who lived near each other, but they had completely different habits. For you see, the monkey was a farmer and every day he would go and he would work in the farm, he'll plant potatoes and some maize. And then sometimes he would go to the market to sell. He was very busy. But then on the other hand, the neighbor, the tortoise was quite lazy. He never liked working, you know? So he would just wake up, he would go to the river with his family, they would take water, they would eat some grass, eat some insects, and so are their lives. Until one day, it did not rain. The river dried up, the grass dried up. So he had no food to give his family. And he thought, oh, I have a neighbor, the monkey. And the monkey, oh, must have something in the store, something he has saved from the previous harvest. So he goes to the monkey and say, oh, mother monkey, well, we are neighbors, we are friends. Uh, can you please give me some potatoes? And I promise when the rain comes down and it's now green again, I will go to my farm, I will plant, I will sell some crops 
and I will give you your money. And of course, Mother Monkey says, all right, okay, my children are like your children. That is fine. Gives three bags of potatoes. And Tortoise goes home with it, cooks with the children and enjoys. And soon the rain comes down and the grass grows again and the river is flowing and Tortoise continues with his routine. And the monkey waits for the money to come. Waits for a month, waits for two months. But Tortoise is not bringing the money. And so she decides to go and ask for her money. But then the Tortoise has been very clever and has planned with her children how she's not going to give money. And they agree to trick the monkey's family by the tortoise behaving like a box. So when monkey comes and finds a box, she is so annoyed, she takes the box and she throws it in the forest because she thinks the box is what is making the children not tell uh, her where their mother is. But when tortoise now comes back, crawls back and says, hey, that box was my bank. That's where all my money was. That is where the money I was planning to pay you is. I need my money. And monkey says, oh, I'm so sorry about that. But don't worry. I know where I threw the box. It is on top of those trees. And the monkey goes and begins looking for the box. And there is no box down. So she climbs one tree and then the other looking for the box, but of course does not find the box. So she goes back and she calls her cousins, the baboons, the gorillas, and they all come and help her look for the box. And that is why even today, when you see the monkey or the family, they're probably up the box, uh, up the tree, but don't worry and don't ask what they are doing because they are still looking for the box. And that is why monkeys climb trees. That is the story. Now, I would like to share with you how I tell the story. And for this, I want us to tell the story together, okay? And first, we are going to play with the number 10, all right? Okay. So I'll teach you a very small rhythm that I use, okay? I don't know if we can maybe put our microphones on just for the first a minute or two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. I would like you to say 10 to 10, 10 to 10. 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 All right, now we're going to combine the first two. We're going to say 10 to 10, 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 10 to I think it sounds better if our microphones are on, are off, because we are Don't forget to do the actions. Okay. All right. So then they say 10 to 10, 10 to 10, 10 to Uh, ju just a moment, I, uh, Wangari, I'm gonna, Wangari, can you turn your microphone on? Yes, I've just, I've just really. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Okay, so now yours is the only mic that's on. For okay, all right. So it goes like this. 10 to 10, 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 okay? Yes, perfect. I can see you guys moving the lips. Very good. We are going to clap. 
We are going to clap like this. 10 to 10, 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 10 to 10. Perfect. Now, please assume you did not hear me telling the story, okay? So we are starting afresh. I would like you guys to sing the song and to clap. And me, I am going to move in a particular way. I hope you can, guys can see me, all right? I'm going to move in a particular way. And I would like you to tell me which animal in the forest moves the way I will be moving. Do you have a deal? Yeah, could we have one volunteer to sing this section? <laughs> yes. Ah, Misha. Very good. I'm going to, can you turn your mic yeah, on, Misha? Yeah, it's done. Go ahead. Uh, do I begin? Yes. All okay. Right. Okay, so just, ten just a minute. To ten. Do I start? Just a minute, yeah? Yes. So, yeah. so Misha will sing, everyone else, you sing and you clap, and I will make a move. And you can type very quickly what animal you think makes the move I'll be making. Okay. So let's okay. go. Nisha, one, two, three. Ten to ten, 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 ten to ten. Again. Ten to ten, 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 ten to ten. 10 to 10. <laughs> ten to, can do I continue? Yeah. All right. So please tell me, yeah, very quickly. Which animal do you think moves the way I'm moving, moving and make the sound I was making? Oh, you guys are amazing. Yes, it is the monkey. And if you find a monkey, where are you likely to see the monkey? Yes, it is likely to be up in the tree. And do you know why monkeys climb trees? Well, you probably do not know. So I will tell you why monkeys climb trees. Once upon a time, the monkey and the tortoise used to be neighbors, but their behavior was completely different. It was like the heavens and the earth. For you see, the monkey was a farmer. And you guys know what farmers do? Yeah, what do they do? Yes, yes, they go to the farm and they cultivate, they plant a hole. And the monkey loved planting potatoes. And she would have so many potatoes. Some she took home to feed with her, with her family. Some she took to the market to sell. And some she put in a big store for a rainy day. And on the other hand, Oh, there was a tortoise and he was really lazy. Every morning when he woke up, he would take his children and they would lazily go to the river, okay? They would go to the river, crawling. And when they got there, they would take water. Can you all take some water? Let's go one, two, three. Aha. Amazing, very good. After taking some water, they would eat some grass. Can you all have some grass? And then they would catch some insects. Hum, hum. Can you have some insects? And they would take some more water. Let's drink some water. And then crawl back home. And this went on for many, many years until one time the rain did not fall. The river dried, the grass dried, the insects, they ran away. And for a number of days, the tortoise and the family had nothing to eat. Aha. So tortoise sat and thought and said, oh, my friend monkey has a lot of potatoes. I will go and borrow some potatoes. And now 
Lena, I would like you to be uh, the monkey, mama monkey. So please unmute yourself. Oh, hi. So Tortoise went to visit the monkey and said, oh, Lena, mama monkey, how are you today? Again, can we have one volunteer? <laughs> yeah, Lena, Lena, yes. Uh -huh. How are you, Lena? I'm good. <laughs> oh, no, Lena, we have lived here for so many years together, isn't it? Yes. And uh, my children are, are just like your children, and your children are just like mine, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um. Uh, I have something small to ask, yeah? C can you please give me three bucks of potatoes? And I promise you, when the rain comes down, I will go to my farm, I will plant, go to the market, and I'll pay you back. Please. Oh, thank you so much, Lena. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And just like our friend Lena here, Mama Monkey gave Tortoise three bucks of potatoes and tortoise was so happy carried them home and the, for the next couple of months his family was happy eating roast potatoes eating fried potatoes eating baked potatoes until finally the rain came down the river was flowing the grass was growing insects were around and tortoise went back to they are old, old habits. Well, they would wake up. Can you all crawl to the river? Uh -huh. Can you drink some water? Can we eat some grass? Uh -huh. Can you catch some insects? Uh -huh. Exactly. Then they would go and sleep until evening and come back to the same routine. And I tell you, when the rain came down, Mother Monkey was very busy going to the farm, digging, planting, going to the market. And she waited for Tortoise to come and bring the money. And she waited for a month, waited for two months, and still nothing was happening. So one day, she woke up one morning and she sent her child, the boy, to go to ask for money from the tortoise. Uh -huh. And can you imagine what song the small boy was singing as he, as he went to the monkey, to the tortoise place? What song is that? Ah, very good, okay. So I am going to move around like the monkey and you are going to sing. So are you guys ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Ten to ten, 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 ten to ten. <laughs> and of course, as soon as Tortoise had that, he knew, oh, 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 it must be someone from the monkey's family. And immediately, she he fell on his back, put his legs inside his shell, and he looked like a box and said to the family, oh, my children, go, go and bring some maize and put the maize on my stomach. And then you must start grinding, all right? And if anyone says anything to you, ask for anything, I want you to answer this. Okay, that is what you're going to answer. And you're going to sing it like this. Enda mote mo kime. Punam, Punam, will you turn your mic on? Yeah, turn your mic on. Yeah, yes. go ahead. All right, so you just answer enda mote mo kime. Whatever anybody tells you, that is the only thing you're going to answer, okay? All right, okay. And don't worry. I will be singing, Mami Awaitebu, and you answer, and, and, um, kime. and you are just saying, my mother is very, very sick. So she went to the forest 
to look for some herbs to mix with her medicine. And we're here making some flour for her porridge. All right? Okay. And so, as soon as they heard the boy coming, Tortoise put the legs in the shell, fell on his back, and the children began to grind. So the child asked, um, where is your mother? Enda moti moki me. Where is your mother? Enda moti moki me. I am not coming here to play today. I have been sent by my mother. Where is your mother? Enda moti moki me. And the boy thought the children were playing. So he went home and said, oh, mommy, mommy, I went to that house and I found the children, they were grinding and they were just singing, and uh, Mother and Monkey thought, mm -hmm. Mother Monkey thought, ah, uh, probably the boy forgot. So the next day, sent a girl. And of course, the girl monkey went. And what was the girl monkey singing? Okay, let's go. One, two, three. And this time, uh, Francine. Francine, please unmute yourself. Okay. Yes, and then you're going to, to be done singing loudly, 10 to 10 loudly, okay? As everyone ten, is, is now. Yeah. 10 to 10. 10 to 10, 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 10 to 10. <laughs> The girl arrived, and when the, the tortoise heard that, tortoise fell on the back, put the legs in the, the shell, took some maize, and the children began to grind. And um, the Shivani, can you please be our answer for this time round? So you're going to say Enda Mutemokime, all right? So the girl asked, "Hi everybody, how is your? Where is your mother?" Enda Mutemokime. Where is your mother? Enda moti moki me. Mimi si jakuja kucheza. Mama enywa kuapi? Enda moti moki me. Cheni mchezo. Mama enywa kuapi? Enda moti moki me. And just like the first time, the girl went back home. Now the very next day, the monkey decided that. She was not going to go to the forest, to the, to the farm. She was not going to go to the market. She was not even going to stay at home and cook for her children. But she herself would go and ask for the money. And of course, she went. And as she went, she was singing. And uh, Christopher, can you please be our monkey for this time? Kindly unmute yourself. 10 to 10, 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 10 to 10. <laughs> oh, and as usual, tortoise, head inside the shell, lying flat, legs inside the shell, and they began to grind. And June, please be our tortoise for today. All right? So, uh huh. Hey, mommy, a white Nanda muti muti me. Nanda muti muti me. Nanda muti muti me. Where is your mother? Nanda muti muti me. Come on, you Nanda. Come on, you echo. Hiya. Nanda muti muti me. Where is your mother? No. <laughs> <Gone. laughs> Did we? My dear friends, monkey was so angry at this response that she took the box and threw it into the forest and said, okay, let me see what you will grain for now. And of course the children began to cry. Why do you think the children were crying? 
because they thought it was their mother who had been thrown. What they didn't know is that Tortoise was very clever. Every time Tortoise fell on the back. So when she was thrown, she fell on her feet and she quickly crawled back to find the children crying. Aha, uh -huh. now let me see who do I ask. Okay, Seema, can you be the child of the Tortoise? Of, of the Tortoise, okay? okay? Yes. All right. ah, my children, why are you crying? Okay. Why are you crying? Oh, and uh, oh. Moti Moki. <laughs> no, tell me where, where you are crying. Why were the children crying? Because they, were, they, because they didn't know it. the mother had been thrown away. Like, you know, yeah, and they, they, because what had been thrown away there? The box. Okay, yeah, the box. The children said, Oh, mommy, mommy, you know what? <laughs> this leader here who was the man, she came here and found us grinding oh and oh she is very evil you know what she did she took our box and she threw it away <gasps> lena lena ha. i thought we were friends we have lived so many years here i thought we were good friends you have actually seen my children grow and yet oh 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 oh, oh. how can you do this you come and find my Good children here, and Amika and Mora and Francine and Kahani grinding some maize to make me some porridge. And then you take my box and you throw it away. <laughs> do you know? Do you know what was in that box? <laughs> no, you don't. That box was my bank. That box was my ATM card. That is where I kept all my money. The money I was planning to pay the lion, the leopard, the buffalo, it was all inside that box. Now tell me, monkey, are you going to pay them? Of course, the monkey was very afraid and said, no, 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 don't worry. I cannot pay them, but I know where I threw the box. It is in that forest. I will go and look. And the monkey went and began climbing one tree and then the other looking for the box. And my dear friends who are in this workshop, can you please help me to sing as we climb one tree and the other tree and look for the box? Okay, so let's go. One, two, three. Ten to ten, 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 ten to ten. And after that, you think they found the box? They did not. So he went, she went home and called her children, her cousins, her grandparents. And from then until now, they are still looking for the box. That is how I would tell that particular story. <laughs> now, I would like us to go for our first uh, off screen activity, maybe for about five minutes. But before we do that, one of the things that we use a lot is um, songs. So personally, I use a lot of songs that I grew up hearing or playing around with. Um, you can use a chant or a tongue twister. You can use a dance. So I'd like you to have a think, yeah? Maybe if you have a paper and pen, what, what particular, from your particular culture, what interactive aspects do you think you can use in a story? And if you say maybe song, can we just think a few rhythms? We just what, actually just one rhythm, one rhythm that you can actually use in a song if you were telling the story I was telling. Let's have a think, a quick thing for a minute. So if you are telling this story of why monkeys climb trees, let's say for the monkeys movement, what would you use that works with you? <laughs> A 
uh -huh. I would like, I would like an action, an action that goes with some kind of vocal. And try and make, try and make it yours, okay? So um, I think, um, Eric, we can go to our, for our first, uh, uh, I don't know how, how, Eric, how do we, how do we make the group, uh, the group room? Well, we're ready to go to breakout rooms. Yes, uh, yes. But I would clear. like, let me yeah, I would like clear to on what's room. going to happen in the yes. breakout room. Uh, when you go to your rooms, each... when you go to your room, hmm. you'll be about four or five people. I would like you to quickly share the aspects of interaction that you have thought about that you think can work in this story, something for the monkey and something for the tortoise. Quickly share, and then when you come back, we will pick uh, five or so people at random and you can share that with us. Okay, so then they should think about what, what the monkey did and what the turtle did? Yes. So interactive aspects between the two, but in their own cultures, in, in your own, uh, how you relate with it. Oh. I already saw David doing something, but I think I hope that that will come with a, yes, that will come with a vocal, yeah? Yeah, so I, often think, I often think of a turtle going very slowly. Exactly, but how would they go slowly? Do they go with a particular tune? Okay. Yes. So uh -huh. people can make up a, a melody and yep. a speech and movement for a turtle yep. and exactly. melody, movement, and speech for a monkey. For the monkey. Or even for the, for, for the monkey's children or the tortoise's children. Take your pick. For the monkey, turtle, or children. Yes. Speech, song, and movement. Exactly. Okay, great. Are everyone ready to go into rooms? Okay, here we go. Go. Okay, uh, Wangari, do I see you? There you are. Okay, turn your mic on, Wangari, please. Yeah, when, when people come back from the breakout rooms, your mic is turned off automatically. Okay, Wangari, okay. go ahead. All right, so um, what I would like, I think I'll just choose at random. Hopefully, I won't choose people who are in the same room. Um, um, maybe I'll start with the room that I sneaked in and I heard what they were saying. Uh, let's say, let's, uh, let's go. Um, Vandana, can you give us what the interaction you would use for the monkey? And everyone, please see this and let us know if you, you can associate that with the monkey. All right, so Vandana, where are you? Can I, yeah, here, Vangari. Okay. Can I? Yeah. Hi. So do, do I sing? Do I be, uh, I mean, exactly what you I are the monkey. So, okay. So now you want, okay. So now this music, which is going to be, it's, it's, we have an instrument called a tabla. So it's the sound of the tabla. Okay. So those are the sound. It's a beat. So it comes out like this. Deen tana, deen tana, deen tana, dere na. That's it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then if, sorry, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And I think you can, you, can, you can easily see 
the monkey walking and you can see the monkey scratching, isn't it? Yeah. So you can, if you are, you might, oh, that's actually a monkey. Thank you very much, Mandana. Right. Let me see. Um, who have I not talked to? Uh, huh. Jennifer Ramsey, are you here? Okay, I think. I'm oh, here. Yeah. All right. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Please be the tortoise and show us how we would know it was you. Um, we actually discussed using uh, basing it on uh, another African song and uh, going slowly, like. And perhaps using the words, I am slow, but I am very smart. I am slow and I am smart. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, Jennifer. That's really nice. I like it. And I like that you have actually... Um, use the rhythm but then inserted words that make uh, relevant to the story very nice i like that personifying i mean making making the interaction your own very good okay let me see uh -huh. who else is here wow if i pronounce your name badly please let me know let me see is this rehe rehe nath are you here with us Okay. You know, um, uh, Wangri, I suggest just ask for a volunteer who uh, would like to yes. share what they worked on. And uh, if you volunteer and called upon, then turn your mic on. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see the people who I have not talked to, but I can, so I'll choose the ones who have their video on. Mashuda, you are here. Give us a movement for the, the tortoise. Uh, you're on mute. Please unmute yourself first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, can you see me? Just yes. putting your husband down like that. Slow and steady. Slowly just going like that. I'm very just, uh, bad at uh, singing song. I've not tried that. So just like that and just move it. Move on. Move on, move on, move on. Move on, move on, move on. Move on, move on, move on. That's what I thought of that also works that also works thank you very much and i think um, the last for this particular session let's go with uh, david i hope david you are not in the same room with the ones i have mentioned can you give us uh, your monkey your cool monkey move and the uh, tortoise move we all had different movements but i did this one i went something like this um monkey nimble monkey quick monkeys playing a new trick <laughs> I did everybody like do that. it with me Monkey nimble, monkey quick, monkey's playing a new trick. Uh, Turtle's like very clever. Turtle going slow. And you can clearly see even by the way he is telling, exactly reflecting what he's telling. Very nice. Now, um, the last one before we go to the next break is that um, I, I, Bilan said something interesting that I did not know. She said she grew up in Europe and they do not have monkeys in Europe. And that when she came to India, because of course uh, the idea she had of monkeys changed. So please, Dylan, can you tell us something small about that? And then I can, I'll, I'll discuss about it. You and your monkey experience. Yes, because in fact, uh, all the representations about monkeys or some animals from Africa or from Asia come um, to us through stereotypes. No, so everyone will be doing monkey like this, no, and like this, and, <laughs> and like this. But, uh, but in fact, when I saw monkeys, I realized that they don't do this in this way. <laughs> when you observe monkeys in real life in the forest, no, they have another type of movements. No, and they walk a lot with the hands and they do other things very different, uh, very amused with the tail and other things that I never realized when I was here in Europe. So it's like, yes, 
how to communicate that you know, to children who have never seen with their own eyes. You know? They have seen on TV, of course, maybe in a zoo, sometimes they go to zoos, but, but still monkeys don't move in the zoos as in the real life either, because they are in a jail. So it's, it's, it's not real. So, so if they see documentaries, they can get something, but otherwise, so how to pass to the children real animals <laughs> in the real context. Yeah. And I think, and I think we discuss. So, for example, for me, is that most of the monkeys we see are actually scratching themselves. It's not about the movement; it's about they always scratch. So, when I'm telling this story, when we finish, we sing the song, and it's all about scratching. And you can scratch anywhere you want, because for monkeys, it's all about scratching. So that's why I use that particular movement. And of course, they're moving like that. But then this also brought up something different. And I think we discussed in the room, and I was saying. So now that I know that there are no monkeys in Europe and that, uh, so if you were to go to such a particular uh, setting and I want to tell the same story, it would actually be nice to just ask the audience, aha, so tell me, have you ever seen a monkey? How does a monkey look like? How does the monkey, how, what does it do? And then I would automatically change my movement to what the children are telling me so they can relate with the monkey, with that particular monkey. So when you're using uh, the interactive aspects, you need to be very, very, very sharp and think on your feet. So for example, when I was in, um, in Orissa in I think 2018, and I, I, were doing a, I was doing a story in one of the parks and I think one of the things I found very interesting is that, so for example, I, I am used, when you do this, it's saying, no, I don't agree with what you're saying. So I went and I was telling my story and my audience, when I asked something like, ah, and I'm like, what's happening? Why is everyone disagreeing with what I'm saying? Because I'm just doing this and I was wondering, I have done this story before it has worked. So why are they always all saying no? Until my translator told me, ah, no, when they say, ah, they're actually saying, oh, uh -huh, okay, it's like doing this. So that also, it was, I think it was a very interesting um, experience for me that had I not, so because it confused me completely. I was like, am I this bad of a storyteller that they're just like, no, 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 no. Everything is no, 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 no. So it's also good to find out where you are telling and just find out what could be different from, your, from where you come from. And uh, also Bilan's uh, comment also reminded me of some, something like another storyteller that I know when they when when they they, uh, they make a sound of a bird, and then where I come from is that we know that is the dove, but where they come from it's a completely different bird. So when when she's doing an, the, the 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 interaction and we say ah so what bird do you think that is and we are very quick to say ah that's the dove and she's like no. And he started wondering, but the dove we know, like just like Bill and uh, monkey, makes this sound. So for the interaction to work, it's also good to do a little bit of homework <laughs> about what you're telling. And I, I also like the idea of um, also playing with, if you go to a new place and you have a story you're telling, um, you can also try and playing with the names of your characters, but then in the, the people's language. It makes a difference. And then they're like, oh, 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 she knows our language. And you become, you know, they're like, they do not, they do not know that you only know those two or three words. But then they see that you are making an, an, an effort to interact with them. Okay. Now, I would like us to go for another break, but then this particular break, um, I don't know if five minutes is going to work. What I would want is in your groups with the interactions that you guys created. Eric, are they going to be in the same groups or different groups? Different groups. Aha, uh -huh. awesome, very good. Now, I would like group number one, I want you to tell the beginning of the story until where, um, so tell us the beginning of the story, the lifestyle of the monkey and the lifestyle of the tortoise. Well, excuse me, one, one Gary, pardon me for interrupting. Uh, uh -huh. There's about 28 minutes left in the workshop. Yes. And uh, I know you were considering inviting the participants to apply the, these methods to, to the story of their choice. 
Yes. So if you uh -huh. do that, I think this is the time because um, uh, if they go into rooms and then come back and demonstrate it, it's, it's going to take up the remainder of the session. Okay. All right. Then that works. So when you go to your rooms, choose a story that you want to work with and then choose an interaction that would work in that story. And it doesn't have to be a very long story. So um, I think, because I think we had about nine or 10 rooms. How many rooms do we have? Yeah, it's about that. Yeah, about that. Can we do at maximum two minutes? Just give us a synopsis and say, this is a story we are trying to tell. This is the part we want to tell. And this is what we want to use as, a, as an interaction. Just before the interaction, uh, the interac before the interaction and after the interaction. Just a small paragraph. Two, three story, two, three sentences in the story that had the interaction. Okay. Okay. So you're having the um, the characters will speak in a special way. They'll sing. They'll move in a special way. Now, sometimes, do you try to get the audience members to move, uh, either to imitate or to reply to uh, a character? I always do. Just like uh, I had a number of tortoises here and a number of uh, monkeys. I always do that. So how can we get the, the, how can we trick the audience members into moving and speaking like the characters? Well, then I think that depends on the interaction you're going to use. If you can, from your room, try and see if the interaction that you choose can be applied to us here. And we promise you're going to be a very good interactive audience. All right, so for example, do you see how I play the tortoise? Uh, with uh, Lena, I think we didn't have to prepare in advance, but she slid very well into the in, into the into the role. We can always try to do that when we come back from the break. Okay, are, are people ready? Yes, and so Wangari, I'm putting you into one of these rooms, but if you want, you come back to the main room, or then you can go to a different room, or whatever you want to do. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so here we go, bye. Okay. Um, Kajal, you want to go? Yes. Uh, Ching, could uh, would you unmute yourself and uh, we both will tell. So what we went with was uh, uh, when the wolf arrives, what kind of uh, feel it would get, you know. So we uh, the first thought that came to mind was the Pink Panther uh, music. Ta-dang, 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 ta-dang. So the movement would be a very sly movement of the uh, uh, wolf. The movement of the pig would be like this, you know. And uh, the voice of what we decided for the pig was nasal, varying nasal sound. And the wolf uh, would be speaking with a little slanted mouth. You know, hello, how are you doing? Types, you know, that. And did I forget anything ch uh, chicken? Uh, uh, no, I think we got most of the stuff. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we thought about uh, um, while the pig running, uh, the song from uh, Fire in the Mountain, instead of saying that, we would say uh, a wolf behind me, oink, 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 wolf behind me, oink, 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 while the first pig and the second pig are running to the third uh, pig's house and the song from Wizard of Oz came to mind when the pigs are celebrating that the wolf is unable to enter. So that's it. Okay. So uh, can you choose one of the characters, <clears throat> Kajal, choose one of the characters and do the, and, 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 and tell that particular part as if you were the character, as if you're telling uh, the story. Okay. I, I didn't go through, we didn't go through each character. Okay. <laughs> Just, okay. put, just, just choose one and assume you're telling us that story. Okay. What line it is? 
Oh, wolf, you can. Okay, let me go nasal. Okay, first. Oh, wolf, you cannot blow this house. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you have another volunteer? Kahani, yes. I see your hand is up. Hi, I'm Kahani Vajek Swati. So we discussed about the story, the lion and the mouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also gave a song each, um, a two liners to the lion and the mouse, where the mouse goes like this. La di da di da, I'm a little mouse. La di da di da, I'm a little mouse. And the lion says, I'm the mighty lion, hear me roar. I'm the mighty lion, hear me roar. So uh, we, of course, didn't delve into the story because <laughs> we all know the story. And uh, then we also discussed a very interesting activity that we could do was we could just snap and all of us could act like either the lion or the mouse. And we snap again and we change the character. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. And you can easily see how we can apply this particular one as an interactive uh, in a story, isn't it? Yes. Ah, very good. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Uh, you. Oh, let's have another volunteer. I think we have time for a, bit, a few more. Aha. Uh -huh. I see Poonam's hand is up. So we were four of us in the breakout room and we decided uh, the story of the ant and the grasshopper. So uh, we could make two nice rhymes, one for the ant and the other for the grasshopper is what we did in the uh, breakout room. So it goes like this. Anybody else from the room who wants to sing? <laughs> Should I go ahead? Right, Jasmine? Right. Okay. So it says, um, the poor ant is working throughout the day. She's working for the rainy day, picking up all the grains that she can find. But the grasshopper on the other side is lying on the grass, nicely enjoying the sunshine and singing with his violin. And what does he sing? He says, whether it's rain or sun, whether it's rain or sun, I'm always having fun. Whether it's rain or sun, I'm always having fun. Oh, that little busy ant has no time to pant, has no time to pant. So that's what the grasshopper is singing with his violin throughout the day. And the poor gra uh, ant, she also has a li uh, two lines. She rhymes and she sings. Dig, dig and pick, dig, dig and pick. And that's the trick, dig, dig and pick. And that's the trick to save for a rainy day. To save for a rainy day. That's all we did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank like you. Thank, thank you so much, Poonam. And, and how this can also work is that even before you start telling the story, you teach the audience these two songs. And they don't tell them they come. They, yes, Sorry. don't tell them they come in the story. So when they come in the story, they're like, "Aha, we know this song," and they'll just join you. Very good. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice, everybody. Aha. Uh -huh. Do we have someone else who wants to volunteer? One more volunteer. Uh, Eric, do you see any other hands up? Yes, I see. I see David Heathfield's hand up. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, David, let's go. I, I didn't put my hand up, but can I <laughs> can I can I ask June? Because June did something fantastic, and we could join uh -huh. in with June, couldn't we? Okay, I can do that. My uh, the story was the Bremen Town musicians, and it starts with a donkey running away because he's going to be sold to a glue factory. 
but he gets out into the world and he doesn't know what to do. So as the donkey starts down the road, I make a clucking sound with my, my mouth and have the children do it. So it goes like this, donkey went down the road. Can you hear that sound? So it sounds like it's hooves. And then he saw a sign that said, the Bremen town musicians are looking for a singer. And the donkey said, well, I can sing. I'll go to Bremen town and sing with the town musician. So donkey went down the road again and started practicing his song. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. Can we all try that? Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. And of course he comes by other animals and they join in. The dog says, bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, bow wow, bow wow. And the cat goes, meow, 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 meow. And the last one, the rooster goes, cock-a-doo, 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 a doodly, doodly, doo. And all of them go on. And each time the animal is uh, introduced to the group, it becomes a duet, a trio, and a quartet. And each of them practice all the way down the road. So. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. I, I, I love that. And I think that the, um, this is actually what makes you, the, the way you tell the story is I tell people that as storytellers, sometimes you can find two or three storytellers telling the same story, but what makes them different is how you tell the story. And that's what, is, what makes it less boring because I think there are some stories I've heard a couple of times from different people, but all the time it's exciting in its own different way because June won't tell the story the same way I tell or Ren won't do the same. So how do you, do you brand yourself? It is the way you tell the story. And you can see that um, interaction is limitless. It's how you can always choose how you want to interact and then choose what works for you. And then maybe a quick one before maybe we just have the final comments is that sometimes I always, I also try to uh, play around with, with opening formulas from different places. So for example, when I'm telling a story that is in, based in Kenya or the East African region, we call a story Hadithi. So I can just, instead of saying story, story, which everybody knows, I would say, aha. So for this one, we're going to use something different. When I say hadithi, hadithi, you say hadithi njo. It's basically saying story, 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 come, but bringing it in a different way. If I am telling a story that comes from South Africa, I'll say San Bonani. Then it, it brings in a different flavor. So you can also play with that. Opening formulas from the different um, culture that the story tells. And you can always ask your fellow storytellers. So I'm telling a story from Ethiopia. Would you know how they start their stories? How would this work? And I think we have three minutes. So I would maybe welcome people to just write their final comments. And as we do that, comments in the chat section, I want to thank you guys so much for making 90 minutes look like 20 or, you know, it looked very brief. And I think Eric would tell you that I was a bit nervous doing this workshop because I have never done an interactive workshop online. So I was telling him, I am used to interacting with my audience on a live. So how do I do interactivity online? But I think you guys have been amazing. You have given amazing energy and you made this thing work better than I thought it would. So thank you guys very much. And uh, back to you, Eric. Yes, would, would anyone like to um, say um, anything that they, they learned today uh, in this workshop? Anything that might stay with you? <clears throat> Definitely, Mangari. I think that was a great learning experience. And yes, it makes a lot of sense to make it interactive. I love the way you tell stories. I love the way you involve uh, the whole audience. In fact, as adults, we enjoyed it. So I can imagine how, how much children must love your sessions. So thank you very much. Very, very enjoyable session this evening. Thank you.
And uh, one more thing that I want to add here is that thanks to Eric, we have all learned the Zoom way. He's the pioneer in doing this, and he's the one who's actually taught a lot to me. Also, whenever there is some problem, I'm not doing things well. He knows what to tell, and I try to follow his instructions, and that's how I know how to interact on Zoom. So I think thank you, Eric, and most of us will agree to this. Thank yes, you. he's been very resourceful. Yes. Can I just say something? Um, when Gary, I, I loved this workshop. And what I, one thing I've learned over the last 12 months is about call and response and joining in. And I think it works really well when you've got a lot of people for people to be muted, to have their microphone switched off, but just to encourage people to be really expressive because people can be really uninhibited when they're on mute. They can be, I, I can shout and I can dance knowing that no one can hear me, but I feel that I'm still part of this community. I, I feel that we're all in it together. So we can have this interactive storytelling, strangely, even though we're all sort of silenced from each other. I think it's incredible. So well done, it's a fantastic workshop. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I loved it as well. It was it was really nice. Enjoyed uh, all the animals as well and acting when we went in the breakup rooms. It was really nice. Everyone came, even if it was the same animal, we all had different ways of portraying it, which was very interesting. <laughs> thank you for that. So uh, Wangari, you, you seem to be saying that just singing and dancing in itself is interactive. Do you mean that the audience members will automatically kind of, they'll sing and dance along? Yes, actually, the story I told you guys, how I finish it is that everybody in the audience, and by the way, this works for both children and adults. When I finish that story, I ask the audience to all stand, and then we begin with 10 to 10, when we are, we, 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 the monkey is looking down, then we be, do the grinding together, and then the monkey goes up the tree. And you should see them doing this. So the, actually the last like five minutes is that. Everybody stands up and we actually do that, all of us together. And it works so well, both for children and for adults. The adults will be like, oh, you want me to stand up and begin scratching? But when they get it, it's amazing to watch. Okay, so now uh, I, I believe we'll, we'll complete the workshop. Is that okay? <laughs>